Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today we're looking at fertilization and pregnancy. Fertilization is a process where gametes or sex cells meet to form a zygote. Pregnancy, otherwise called the gestation period, is the point from conception or fertilization to the point of giving birth. In human beings, this usually takes up to 40 weeks. Let's look at the fertilization process. For fertilization to take place, the penis must enter the vagina and deposit semen. When semen is being deposited, the sperm cells within the semen will swim towards the egg within the fallopian tube. Let us pause for a brief moment. There is a popular saying that you are a chance within a million. Actually, you are a chance in many millions. A male, on an average, can ejaculate anywhere between 1.5 to about 7.5 milliliters of semen. Within every milliliter, there can be 15 to about 200 million sperm cells. Yes, you heard me right. 200 million sperm cells. It therefore means for you to be born, it is luck, miracle, and everything else in between. Now, let us zoom into the actual fertilization process. For fertilization to take place, the egg cell will be surrounded by many sperm cells. Each sperm cell will try to digest their way through the membrane of the egg cell. However, the egg cell will only allow one sperm cell to digest its way through. To burrow through the membrane of the egg, of the egg cell, the sperm cell has a structure in its head known as the acrosome. The acrosome contains digestive enzymes. The digestive enzymes are needed to break down part of the wall of the egg cell so that the sperm cell can enter. If you notice, there is an N within the sperm cell and there is also an N within the egg cell. The N represents the haploid number of chromosomes, which means half the number of chromosomes. So the egg cell and the sperm cell, they are classified as haploid cells. The haploid number in human beings is 23, which means one of each pair of the total chromosome. Now, uniquely what will happen is that the head of the sperm cell will break off leaving the tail outside so that the nucleus from the sperm could fuse with the nucleus of the egg. When this takes place, a diploid cell will be formed known as the zygote. The zygote is diploid as mentioned. Why? Because the egg cell was an N and the sperm cell was also an N. You, you add those two ends together, you get two ends. Two ends means, means the total number of chromosomes. In human beings, it is 46. So 2N is 46 chromosomes or the full number of chromosomes. Let's go back into the fallopian tube to see what is happening to the zygote. The zygote will move towards the uterus, but while moving, the zygote will undergo cell division by mitosis to form an embryo. So this, the zygote moves down, it will attach to the wall of the uterus, particularly the endometrium. Let's zoom in to see what exactly is happening here. So the embryo that was formed, notice there are many cells. So the embryo is now implanted within the endometrium of the uterus. 
the embryo will continue to undergo rapid cell division to form the fetus. The fetus will be formed and, uh, and also a placenta will be formed. Attaching the fetus to the placenta will be the umbilical cord. We will talk about that in more details. So once the placenta is formed in the uterus, the umbilical cord will be the connection between the fetus and the placenta. Surrounding the fetus, there is a sac called the amniotic sac. The amniotic sac contains two layers or two membranes. The outer membrane is the turian and the inner membrane is the omnian. Filling the amniotic sac is a fluid called the amniotic fluid. Together, the amniotic sac and the amniotic fluid will provide means of protection for the fetus as it develops. The amniotic fluid serves some unique purposes. Some of the purposes or function of the amniotic fluid include providing cushion, which means it prevents sudden vibration or extreme shock or movement to the fetus. So the amniotic fluid will serve as a shock absorber. The amniotic fluid also provides buoyancy that will enable movement of the fetus within the uterus. The amniotic fluid also helps to maintain the temperature of the fetus. Now let's zoom into the umbilical cord. Now the umbilical cord is very unique and very important in terms of transmission of substances. Now the transportation of substances are done in two types of blood vessels. So within the umbilical cord, you have umbilical vein and umbilical arteries. Now let's look at the umbilical vein first. The umbilical vein, there's only one, and the umbilical vein will take substances from the placenta to the fetus. The placenta is the filtering organ within the uterus that filters substances from the mother's blood and pass them on to the fetus. Now, the umbilical vein, unlike other regular veins in the body, the umbilical vein will carry oxygen-rich blood or oxygenated blood to the fetus. So within the umbilical vein, you will find glucose, oxygen, amino acids, and many more nutrients, also hormones and antibodies. All these substances are needed for growth and development for or within the fetus. The umbilical arteries, which are two of them, they will be responsible to take waste substances from the fetus towards the mother's blood. These wastes will include carbon dioxide, urea, and other nitrogenous waste. Very important to note is that the mother's blood and the fetus's blood, they do not mix. There are two important reasons why the, why the blood of the mother and the fetus do not mix. One is that the blood type of the mother can be different from the fetus. If two different blood types mix, then the blood can coagulate or clot. One blood could be producing a lot of antibodies to reject the other blood, and hence it could lead to some fatal results. Another reason is that the mother's blood tend to be of a higher blood pressure compared to the fetus's blood pressure. Very importantly, if the mother's blood pressure is greater than the fetus's blood pressure, if the blood were mixing, then the capillaries within the fetus could rupture and lead to death or even miscarriage. Additionally, if the mother has a disease, then 
it may not pass on to the fetus since the blood are not mixing. Even though the placenta serves as a filtering organ, alcohol, for example, and other chemicals may able to diffuse across the membrane into the fetus blood. So it is very important for the mother to be careful in observing what she is eating or consuming during pregnancy. At this point, I wanted to notice that the umbilical vein will carry substances towards the fetus, while the umbilical arteries will take substances away from the fetus to the placenta. You can look at the animation and see the substance moving back and forth. So the substances needed by the fetus is carried by the umbilical vein, and the waste substances are taken away from the fetus to the placenta by the umbilical arteries. We are now at the end of this lesson, and I am absolutely looking forward to see you in the next lesson. Keep safe until we meet again.